This is a webinar on confined space inspections using unmanned aerial vehicles. It's a presentation by Sky Futures. The presentation has been prepared by Steve Moyer, the Head of Engineering at Sky Futures, and by Colin Hickey, the Head of Product. The webinar will cover a definition of confined spaces, the research and development that Sky Futures and our partner Flyability have been involved in, um, in describing the hardware and the operating procedures for accessing confined space without manned entry. We'll then see an example of that through a case study and then some final conclusions. The definition of a confined space is any place in which due to its enclosed nature that arises a reasonably foreseeable specified risk and that might be a chamber, a tank, a vat, a silo, things like this. The, the types of risks that occur in these confined spaces as defined by the approved code of practice for confined space entry by the UK Health and Safety Executive is serious injury to any person at work arising from a fire or an explosion, the loss of consciousness, loss of consciousness from an increase in body temperature, asphyxiation due to the presence of gas, fume, vapor or lack of oxygen, the drowning of any person from a liquid or asphyxiation or entrapment in a confined space that has free flowing solids within it. So obviously there are a, a large number of safety issues related to confined space entry. But additionally, um, traditional visual inspection also is quite a laborious process. It takes a significant amount of time and specialist equipment. And actually the process of confined space entry using scaffolds, ropes, things like this can cause damage to the confined space surface itself. You can see, for example, the boot marks on the wall as this person abseils the wall. So there are a number of challenges with confined space entry relating to safety and also property damage that need to be considered um, that if solved can lead to significant business benefits and especially when considering time saving. So to summarize the main challenges are how can we improve safety therefore reduce risk increase efficiency and increase quality of the work performed and this is what Sky Futures and our partner Flyability set out to look into in the in applications within industry and the research and development began with selection of the Elios UAV this is a device manufactured and supported by Flyability you can find out more about this product and their future products at flyability.com it's a very capable device it has a protective cage around the robot which rotates around all three axes giving it excellent performance within complex geometrical spaces while still flying very efficiently and very safely. The flight time is up to 10 minutes. It's con constantly capturing HD quality video. It's also constantly capturing thermal video as well. There is onboard lighting, which means that there's no exter external lighting needed within the confined space. It um, completely operates on its own, operated by the pilot and the inspector. The, the power transmission in, in open atmosphere, it can transmit and be controlled up to five kilometers away. Within a confined space, obviously, you, you're inherently working through maybe one or more walls. Um, so it is quite a capable device in terms of accessing distant spaces within confined space while still having good control of, of the item. The camera sensitivity has a range of ISO 100 to ISO 800 and that could be controlled by the pilot at flight time so you can adjust the camera settings and the lighting to get optimum illumination of the space that you're in. So this device has been used at Sky Futures Training Academy where we have a range of scenarios um, with which to train our pilots, test procedures and also research new equipment and applications. Um, this is a mock-up of an oil platform including Helideck and a number of modules inside. Um, the typical kind of footage that we capture during our testing is seen here. And we've flown many thousands of hours through all of the time spent at the training academy with the device as, it, as its design has evolved. And our operating procedures have been designed and then tested and then verified to ensure that we can achieve confined space inspection with an unmanned aerial ve vehicle without manned entry. The use of a UAV when performing confined space inspection actually introduces new challenges. So obviously we need to ensure that we get complete coverage of the confined space area and without having a person in there and just seeing things from the drone's perspective we need a procedure in place and 
a series of activities that we carry out to ensure that we do have complete coverage. We need to make sure that we're constantly getting good quality imagery so that we can detect the anomalies. We need to be able to, to know that we are able to see with good enough quality to, to spot the problems that a confined space inspection aims to detect. We also need to know where we are during, uh, during that process because we need to identify the location of the problem that we've spotted because obviously sending people in to do fixes later they need to be directed to the right spot and to obviously understand the problem we need to understand where it is obviously during the flight we need to fly safely causing no damage and also in a manner where we can recover the UAV through flight and not through manual recovery this requires rigorous operating procedures and these have been designed and tested and practiced by the pilots and the inspectors at the extensive test facility that Sky Futures use. So given the nature of the investigation and the research done to develop these procedures, here's a quick overview of the operating procedure that has been developed. So the process comprises a pre-agreed flight plan that is designed by the inspector and the pilot based on general arrangement drawings and also information such as the risk-based inspection for the facility and previous inspection reports that highlight previously known observations and anomalies. The pilot and the inspection engineer work at the entrance to the confined space, typically at the manhole. The UAV is flown into the confined space and obviously with the diameter of only 400 millimeters it's got great accessibility. And the UAV is flown with live first-person view fed back to the pilot and the inspection engineer who are concentrating on the live video feed as the flight is carried out. First of all, a reconnaissance flight is carried out where flight hazards are identified, noted, and then flight plans are adjusted. And the UAV is recovered and further discussions and more detailed flight plans are developed based on the real conditions inside the tank where the pilot and the inspector have never seen firsthand. The battery time is up to 10 minutes, but we use a flight duration less than this as a safety margin to ensure that we can always achieve safe recovery through flight of the UAV. And that actually adds to improve the human factors issues that arise through the high level of concentration required through this, t this type of work. Um, through systematic flight and through detailed flight planning based on general arrangement drawings, the UAV whereabouts is known at all times and therefore anomalies can be very reliably marked up on general arrangement drawings. If the UAV location is not known, then we can back away and locate ourselves by looking for certain key indicators in the surroundings and then go back to the more detailed flight. Additionally, in between flights, the high definition video footage is reviewed. The live feed of video is at slightly lower resolution and also you get some interference due to transmission through the walls and things like this. So the onboard captured HD footage is extracted from the drone at battery swap time and reviewed to verify the existence of anomalies and also look for items that might not have been detected through the first person view. And the application of this procedure will now be elaborated through a case study. So this was a floating production storage of loading vehicle um, cargo tank inspection that was carried out and it had a 700 millimeter access hatch. The confined space itself contained ladders, heating pipes, transfer pipes, valves, stiffeners. The walls were corrugated bulkheads on some sides. There were structural members in the ceiling and also a, a set of previously maintained locations from previously observed anomalies such as new coating applications and things like that. The work was performed in the presence of the owner operator of the vessel and also their classification body. So a general visual inspection is typically carried out at a good standoff distance from the walls with high illumination power to the onboard lighting and also high ISO setting. So you can see it leads to somewhat granular footage because the high sensitivity of the um, ISO setting and also a lot of reflection from the cage but we do illuminate the space and we're able to see things such as pipes penetrating the bulkheads and heating pipes on the ground and the corrosion patches from previous remedial work that have been applied to the walls. When you compare to close visual inspection or detailed visual inspection up close to the surface, you can see that we get, with a lower light level and a lower camera sensitivity, we get very good capture of these well, tow welds on this bracket and great condition indication from the coatings that have been applied to these areas. 
and ultimately great evidence supporting findings from the detailed visual inspection up close. So let's take a look at a piece of work that Sky Features have performed. If we go to the Sky Features inspection portal at portal.skyfutures.com and log in, the first page I'm taken to is a map of the world that has my various facilities and this is a demo account that includes subsets of anonymized information. The FPSO confined space inspection is located here. If I drill down into the facility I'm taken to the 3D view. I'll first zoom out and pan around and what I can see here on the screen are a number of observations attached to the surface of this confined space, this cargo tank. On the left I have a filter pane that allows me to filter the set of observation findings by time, type of observation, the structure that they're associated to, the severity of the anomaly that has been discovered, the severity of corrosion and the rating of the coating condition that remains. When I click on an observation, I'm taken to the observation location and I'm also moved to a camera angle that the inspection engineer wished me to view this location from. On the right hand side, an information pane opens up containing all of the information related to this observation. So the information supporting this observation comprises a gallery of images, videos and schematics and textual description of the observation. So its severity, its textual description of the location, description of the observation itself, and then any other information that was included within the scope of the inspection project. So a rating of corrosion severity, coating condition, and even recommendations by the inspection engineer. From the gallery, I can have a quick view of any of the images that the inspection engineer has provided as evidence to support this observation. If I click on the image in the small viewer, I can expand it to full screen and then see in high quality with the ability to zoom and pan the evidence in detail. By moving my mouse to the right or the left, I can browse through the gallery of media ultimately finding video clips from which I can watch the first person view of the UAV in high definition as it traversed for example here the floor of the confined space observing the weld conditions the coating repairs and the previous coating and in this way I have access to a large array of information for my facility accessed through a very small number of clicks in a very intuitive manner and by using a combination of the 3D model and supporting high resolution images and high definition video I'm able to provide excellent evidence for the findings of a confined space inspection using UAV as opposed to manned confined space entry. In conclusion, the Elios UAV and Sky Futures operating procedures provide industry with a high quality, inherently safer, confined space inspection method. The findings are reliably captured, assuring complete coverage with the location of the anomaly known and high quality evidence of findings gathered continuously. HD video, images and thermal video is captured for future comparison and trending of anomaly properties. Inspection takes less time and results in zero impact on the surfaces within the confined space Downtime is reduced, meaning the operator can get back into production sooner. And follow-up work 
with manual entry can be directed more accurately, therefore no surprises occur, and work is carried out more safely and efficiently. A questions and answer session was held during these webinars and the full Q&A document is available to all delegates. So finally, thanks for attending today's webinar or listening again online. If you have any questions about confined space inspection or any UAV services or software tools, please contact info at skyfutures.com or contact one of our regional representatives around the world using the email addresses shown here. Thanks very much.